Welcome to episode 19 of Two Pastors in a Plant. We're in a finally a new location. I think we've That's been right. talking about it for a while. Hopefully this is a better setup. I mean, 100% is a better setup than our old one. Hopefully audio and visually. But we're excited to be uh, in a different setting. I know that for sure. Um, the question for us this uh, evening is, is it time... <clears throat> For civil disobedience, we're filming this on August 10th. I believe this is probably going to go out on August 12th. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason that we're asking this question now—I mean, this has been a question for a lot of churches for the past few months. Uh, really, that question is, you know, largely centered around the mandates for churches in different states on whether they, or not they can meet. And particularly what has been going on in California Mm -hmm. with uh, Grace Community Church in Los Angeles or right outside of Los Angeles. Los Angeles County. Los Angeles County. Uh, And uh, they decided to meet. In fact, John MacArthur's opening statement right before I think he um, preached was, Welcome to the Grace Community Church Peaceful Protest, which was met with loud applause. Standing, so, standing ovation. Standing ovation. And so that uh, that question of, I guess, and I'll, we'll, we'll get more into this in a second as I push you a little bit on this, but like, is it time now? I mean, different states have different things, so right. we're, we're okay in Mississippi. But for other states uh, around the, the, the U.S. and in other countries, is it time for disobe- disobeying uh, maybe the government's mandate to not meet? Well, like you said, uh, different jurisdictions are handling this in different ways. So in Mississippi, both uh, in Mississippi, the governor and then locally, our mayor and board of aldermen have all specifically said churches can do whatever you want. So we could, if people wanted to, we could pack them in as tightly as sardines and have no masks and sing 20 songs and spray all over each other while we were doing it. it. I guess if we chose to go down that path. So we're we're certainly not in a position in Mississippi to have to worry about civil disobedience because the government really isn't asking us to do anything now. They were at least, I think, March, April, May, they were consistently requesting that churches not meet, but they're not even doing that, at least in our jurisdiction right now. But in California, it's different. In Nevada, it's different. So in California, there's a, a ban on indoor worship services. There or, or they're limited, I think, to a certain size. Hmm. And the same thing in California, in uh, Nevada. And the, the really tricky thing about Nevada is that while churches cannot meet with more than 50 people, casinos are wide open. And there's, you know, I don't know, thousands hmm. of people in those gigantic casinos in, in Las Vegas. So, first of all, it depends on where you are. Well, let's do that. Let's say you're in Las Vegas, let's say you're Casey Russell. Okay, uh, you're in that position. I mean, how how are you going to handle? What's the, what's the appropriate thing to do at that point? You know, it, and, and again, it's been. I mean, is there a certain timeline where you start to really consider it, yeah. and how and how arbitrary is that? Because if, uh, you know, well, the, in my mind, there'd be a couple of tests. And, and number one, the the main test in my mind for civil disobedience would be: Are they singling churches out? Mm-hmm. And they're not in, in Nevada. They're singling casinos Singles out, out casinos and giving them, because they make a lot of money for <laughs> right. the state. And they're giving casinos special treatment, but movie theaters, bowling alleys, and churches, things like that, they're all lumped together. It bothers me when I read how you know, flippantly some commentators talk about church services and how, well, why can't you just go to multiple services or why can't you just go online? Um, well, and that's precisely the reason why government should be very hesitate, hesi- very very hesitant to get involved in church matters because mm. it's we don't ultimately answer to the state mm. and uh, they, they don't understand why getting together in one assembly regularly is so vitally important for the life of the Christian and the longer I go as a pastor the more convinced I am of that but having said that if I'm in Nevada uh, or California I'm going to be slow to criticize other churches for taking a different approach. Mm. I'm going to be slow to criticize a John MacArthur. He's the pastor of Grace Community Church. I'm going to be slow to criticize him for 
after waiting four months, deciding, okay, we've waited long enough, we're going to meet, because I'm not going to criticize him. It makes me uncomfortable mm. that you've got 3,500 people packed into an auditorium and they're singing. Were there, did they have any? They did no social distancing. Huh. They were packed in there, just like at the Shepherd's Masks, Conference. Nothing. No masks, and they sang a bunch of songs. So that makes me huh. uncomfortable just based on what I've read. But I'm not going to... I'm not going to say John MacArthur is disobeying Scripture by doing that. Okay. I might say, I'm not so sure that's the wisest thing to do right now, because I would mm. feel terrible as a pastor if, you know, one person, but certainly dozens or hundreds, got infected at a worship service. Um, but I, 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 my position this is increasingly, we need to cut everybody a lot of slack. Mm -hmm. We need to cut our govern, governing authorities a lot of slack because they're trying to balance a lot of competing interests. Um, I'm more sympathetic for California than Nevada because Nevada has exempted casinos mm -hmm. for what seems like just purely financial reasons. But um, so if I'm Casey Russell in Nevada, to answer your question, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm at, I'm at civil disobedience, especially because there you can, you know, if you're a church Casey Russell size, I think you can meet. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you, you can break it up into two or three services. We're going to have to break our church into two services this coming Sunday because we're getting kicked out of the middle school, not because the government is doing anything, but because they're fogging the middle school for the coronavirus. So we're going to be put into a small auditorium, mm -hmm. and we think we're going to have to have two services to meet everybody. We could refuse to do social distancing this Sunday mm -hmm. and meet in one service probably at our new location. And still be obeying the law. And still be obeying the law, but it's my it's my right. conscience and the elders and the elders. Ultimately, it's our consciences that are keeping us from doing that. Not any, not any government mandate. So that's not civil disobedience. That's just us saying we'd feel really bad if somebody got sick. You, you said churches don't answer to the state. Uh, we answer something else, and that was John MacArthur's big point. In fact, it almost seemed like he was at some points of, of some of the stuff I just read, uh, maybe getting into a little bit of criticism of people who aren't meeting because they might be disobeying the Bible. Yeah. Because they're not. So it, it is, I mean, all these decisions have been really tough. I like how you're saying you're not going to criticize anybody else because they're doing this or that. But I mean, at what point? It just seems like a very... Well, let's say, let's say the worst case scenario, we're in Mississippi, all of a sudden the governor has this big change of heart and he says, you know what? I'm going to order for the sake of public safety that churches no longer meet. Say he did that, and at the same time he exempted movie theaters, bowling alleys, amusement parks, and casinos, you know, on the coast and on the Mississippi River. All right, the first, if he did that, I would be very nervous. And if that went on very long at all, then in my mind we'd be talking about a time for civil disobedience okay. because that's targeted at churches. And that, that's kind of the beauty of First Amendment jurisprudence in the United States. You can't single out uh, any one particular type of speech or sure. religious practice for punitive action without it raising an extreme suspicion in the eyes of the law that actually you're trying to you're trying to limit someone's freedom of religion. And so, if that happened here, if yeah. if they exempted, if they focused on churches, uh, I would and you know very quickly I would have reservations about that. But if they just went back and said, we need to shut everything down again. Well, let's get, let's put, let's do that. That would let's, be a different story. Let's think about back in April when everything was pretty much closed except for grocery stores. So grocery stores are open. Mm -hmm. But is there is there a point where this months and months goes on? But yeah. It, it, we didn't get there because I, uh, it was so unknown back in April. Yeah. And I, in my mind, well, it still is, you're right. But in my mind, we, we, we were still a long way right. from that because mm -hmm. it was applied to everybody and we you know even though we didn't have any you know very few infections in April or May in Mississippi mm -hmm. now after July and we look at all the deaths and all the infections we can say okay that wasn't that wasn't an unreasonable thing to do i think everybody kind of regrets probably shutting it down shutting everything down the way they did mm -hmm. but again i'm cutting them a lot of slack because no, we, you know, nobody in our lifetime has had to go through this. Mm -hmm. But if you know, if it went on for, if it went on to where 
all of a sudden the cases just went down to like two new cases a day and hospitalization dropped to you know fewer than a dozen statewide and they were still saying everybody everybody stay at home then I would be more open to talking about civil disobedience and at that point it's just a wisdom issue between the elders and yeah and and of course it would be a wisdom issue and I just have a hard time imagining the rest of society right because that's another thing we have to factor in is what is our reputation with outsiders as Christians sure. So we may have the we may have the right under God to do some certain things when it comes to gathering, but if it's going to make all of our unbelieving neighbors say they don't care about us, mm-hmm. well, we need to factor that in. Okay. Whether that's a reasonable thing for them to think or not, it would be foolish of us to just utterly disregard it because it. we're supposed to go at them with the love of Christ right. and the message of the gospel. That's good. Well, that I think that covers all of it, and uh, hopefully there's. We don't, there's your answer. Hopefully, we don't get to that point. Lord willing, I don't we think continue we will. to meet in Mississippi. I do feel sorry for other church leaders in different states that are having to deal with stuff like this in Nevada and California and other places. In, in, in the District of Columbia, it's even tougher. Mm. They can't even meet outdoors wow. in the district. So, a big influence in my life, Mark Dever and Capitol Hill Baptist Church, they've been crossing the Potomac River into Mar- uh, Virginia. I didn't know that. And having outdoor services there because in Virginia, outdoor services are legal. Hmm. So it's just, again, it's a very complicated time and we need to be giving each other we a lot of grace on this. We need to continue to pray that yeah. things progress and for those in leadership in other churches and other states because I know that's difficult. Thankfully, praise God, we, uh, we're meeting and uh, things are going well. So, absolutely. Thanks for watching. That's episode 19. That might have been a little bit longer than normal, but uh, thanks for answering those questions. And we're going to be back next week uh, with episode 20. See you soon.